Hi, welcome back to me and Monami. And today is a very special day because Elton, our Citroen me, is two years old. That's right, we've had him two whole years and he's done 10,500 kilometers. So in this video, what I thought I'd do is ask the question, if we had the chance to do it all again, would we? Could we? So it is really hard to believe that two whole years have elapsed of us having this Citroen Ami. Two years since it was delivered to us on that low loader on Villefranche Beach on a day, don't forget, when neither of us could drive. In fact, neither of us can still drive. But rather than just replay all the things that have happened to us over the last couple of years, you know, the mountains we've been up, the charges we've missed, the charges we've found, uh, what I thought I'd do is just break this video down into very clear, distinct sections. I'm going to go through with you all the stuff that we love about this Citroen Ami, and then I'm going to tell you all the things we don't like. And at the end, I'm going to try and give you a bit of a steer if you're thinking about getting one as to whether it's a good idea. Starting with the good stuff, for us, the fact that we didn't have to do a driving test or have a license was an incredible thing. We'd have never bought it without that. That was the appeal. I saw it in an electrical shop. It was, it was in the equivalent, the French equivalent of Curry's Darty. Uh, and I went, I want one of those. Not just because I didn't need a license, but because I actually love the design of it. I love the quirkiness of it. I love the innovativeness of it. Similarly, for us, the, the actual size of this thing is a complete bonus. There are two of us in a very small chihuahua. It doesn't bother us at all that we don't have a boot. On the odd occasion where we've decided to buy a chair, uh, on, on, in some strange antique market. We've put the handy rack roof rack on, the inflatable roof rack, and we've got away with it that way. But for us, traveling around, if you plan, if you're careful, this is big enough. Is it big enough for the shop for us for the week? Yes, absolutely. The shop and the dog, all at the same time. Big question people are always asking about a Citroen Ami, they're always asking about any electric car, is does it live up to its predictions of range? Well, for us, in warm weather or hot weather, yes, 100% it has delivered on range. In fact, it is almost frighteningly accurate and it really delivers in terms of regenerative power. There are many times we've gone up a mountain uh, and we've used 30, 40 kilometers of range getting there, so we've only 30 left and by the time we get home, we're more or less still got 30 left because you've regenerated coming back downhill across. You do have to stick to the same route don't come back a different way because it could all go horribly wrong. The other thing that has been amazing to us is been just how cheap this thing has been to run. We were trying to work out what we'd spend. If we were to say five pounds a week uh, or five euros a week in terms of uh, electricity charges, I think that would be on the top side. Not least because for most of the first year we were getting free charges at all the public charges in Nice and the surrounding areas. We now just get the first hour free, but it still means that very often we are completely charging up for nothing or we're getting free parking as a sort of recompense. And of course, if you're charging up at home, you're still looking at about one euro 50, one euro 60 for a full charge, and you seldom are putting in a full charge. So it is incredibly cheap to run. Um, and it's been incredibly cheap to run in terms of maintenance, because as I say, we have spent absolutely zero on maintenance since we got this thing. We bought little bits and pieces for it, some things like the sort of, uh, uh, rear view mirror we've actually ditched we find we don't really need it but you know we've bought portable power stations we've been given portable power stations we bought fan heaters we bought all those things we're going to come on to some of those issues because they're going to figure in the negatives um, but thus far this has been incredible value now i have to say when we got this thing delivered on Villefranche Beach, I was terrified that it would break down within 10 minutes. I'd read all these horror stories on Facebook groups of people who've got early vehicles and their batteries had failed and this had failed and that had failed. Uh, and I'm not saying for a second those weren't genuine, though sometimes I do think there's a bit of, bit of bottiness goes on, don't you? A bit of bottiness from other car manufacturers, but I might be wrong. Those are the positives. We've had a tremendous amount of fun. It has allowed us to go to places we would never have been able to get to on our electric bikes. 
and don't forget when we paid for this i think it was about six and a half thousand euros we got a 900 euro echo bonus back from mr macron so really and truly we were buying an electric car which cost about the same price as a high-end electric bike in fact there are quite a lot of electric bikes i see around here that are 10 12 15 000 euros so um on that level for us it was a great bargain of course the prices have gone up a bit since then inflation uh, and of course if you're buying this thing in britain uh, then i think you're paying uh, quite a bit more but i still think it represents very good value but and there is a big but let's look at the negatives now because there are quite a list of negatives of problems that we've encountered that we really didn't see coming when we got it a very basic level this is a very basic car it is not the most comfortable vehicle you will ever sit in those seats are plastic those cushions are pretty hard and i think an awful lot of people like us have gone away and found some ikea cushions or some other uh, brand of cushioning to try and uh, to try and ease the old body on long journeys because it can get a bit painful similarly the seats aren't very wide uh, now they're wide enough for us but uh, I've noticed uh, on the odd occasion I've given a lift to a, a, a larger gentleman or lady sometimes it can be a little bit difficult to access the old uh, um, handbrake and similarly because of the way that the uh, drive reverse and neutral are placed the, the gears if you like at the side of the seat um, again if you're on the larger size I think some people probably struggle a little bit to find those buttons which is why I think uh, you, uh, Fiat in their version of this the Topolino have um, moved those buttons onto the front dash uh, I think that's probably a good idea I'm sort of used to it down there now but it, it, it I think it would be an issue for some people what about the big issue that everybody comes up with all the time which is the top speed 28 miles an hour 45 kilometers an hour in town in the center of nice i absolutely promise you it is never a problem at all we can drive along the promenade des anglais and we really i mean it's 50 50 kilometer road in places we are seldom holding anyone up in fact for the most part we are going just as fast as any ferrari or any lotus or any other porsches that we see around here from monaco because in the end you're all in the same traffic now of course when you get onto the open road when you go onto single lane highways with truckers behind us like we had last week when the road is a 90 road and you're still allowed on it you are going to cause a tailback and that is a simple fact you're going to have to develop a thick skin and you're going to have to take a little risk because in the end this is a quadricycle it is a light quadricycle this has not got an airbag this has not got a great deal of bumper protection at the front or at the rear you would not wish to be in a crash with a truck or an angry trucker um, so bear in mind that this is not the safest car this is no volvo it doesn't have a roll bar it doesn't even have padding on the metal frame inside and i think you know as the guys in monaco who rolled theirs over discovered uh, that, that a lot of the damage was done to the passenger in that because he, he smashed against the metal work inside now you can allay those issues a little bit by perhaps putting some foam in there but just bear in mind this is not for the super safety conscious um, it has passed all the all the laws uh, to be able to be driven on the road but that doesn't mean that it's a tank it isn't uh, that it only has a 75 kilometer range of problem it isn't for us I mean you may say that's ridiculous if you watch our videos they're always having problems well of course we are because we deliberately go to places where it probably shouldn't go we go to mountain villages we 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 pose a challenge for it but for the most part in fact we have never been stranded anywhere in two years for the most part we find a local charger and if we don't we've got our portable power station with us which gives us 10 or sometimes if you take the bigger one 15 kilometers of range uh, are they essential to buy i think it depends on your circumstance if you're using it in an urban environment you absolutely don't need one but if you are doing a commute like like say that's the outer limits of say 60 kilometers uh, a daily commute and there is no charger at the other end or you have to wait for the charger and you can just about get through with a portable power station then it might be worth you looking the prices have come down they're under a thousand pounds now but they're still not cheap and it does you know it racks up the total cost of owning one of these but now we come on to what i think 
is the single biggest issue with this. And I think it's something you, that people have to absolutely consider. And it is the effect of temperature on this car. Temperature cold, temperature hot. Let's begin with the one that affects us the most, which is the fact that this thing turns into an absolute cauldron in summer. The black roof soaks up the heat. The sunroof soaks up the heat, even though we've got a parasol under it. Uh, the glass brings in the heat. There is no insulation here. This plastic soaks up the heat. If you're unfortunate enough to have to park in the sunshine like we do, we have to coat it in turkey baster stuff. Turkey baster? No, turkey foil stuff. Turkey baster is something you use in a quite different way. Um, we coat it in foil. We've got multiple fans. We've tried all kinds of, you know, those vaporizing fans. Everybody has suggested everything. We've thought, we've thought about coating this white on the roof, you know, in a sort of vinyl, which would make it cooler. People have suggested putting a solar panel on the top that would reflect some sun. All kinds of issues, but ideas. But in the end, I do not believe that whilst you can make it a bit better, if you live somewhere where it is six months of the year, as it increasingly is here now, very hot and three or four months really, really super hot like it was this year, you are going to get very hot in this thing. And I, I cannot begin to tell you how bad tempered it can make you, particularly if you're trying to do something like when we're trying to film the videos and plug things in and everything. And also there comes a point, and it happened to us this summer, which may not be a bad thing in terms of fitness, where I went, do you know what? I can't face getting in this thing again. I'm gonna get on my bike. And I got back on my e-bike and you know that was a good thing. Um, the bottom line is what would make a hell of a difference if you live in a hot climate is if this roof was actually retractable. If it was a, a roof like an old 2CV or if it was a roof like the Citroen Ami buggy has, or if it was a roof like the Citroen, uh, like the Fiat, Fiat Topolino has. Um, now, I think some firms have looked into the idea of manufacturing and selling these. The thing is, this is just a plastic roof, and um, I'm not saying it's not possible, but I've yet to see a really good version of someone who's taken this out and put the old tarpaulin over the top. We would absolutely love an open roof version of this. Yes, of course, we'd love a Citroen Ami buggy, but only for the summer months in, in this kind of weather. We saw a buggy yesterday on the road, and the, the couple looked like they just got it, uh, and they were frozen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, this it, the south of France is not super hot all year round. Um, you know, and uh, I think in Britain the buggy would de definitely be a you know a, a seasonal item, shall we say, a seasonal item. But yeah, the heat is a massive issue. Uh, in terms of how the heat affects performance, thus far I don't think it's affected us battery range at all. Um, we've driven in staggering heat and we've still got the same range and the vehicle has been going at the same speed. So on that level, it's not been a problem, but on personal level, it's made it sometimes unbearable. Now, what about the opposite? What about cold weather? Well, I think cold weather and, uh, has a profound effect on this vehicle and should have a profound effect on whether you think it's gonna work for your use case. On a very simple level, this thing gets very cold. It's why we produce and other people are 3D printed draft excluders for the door and all this. It partly gets very cold because there's no insulation. It partly gets cold because of these gaps that these draft excluders available on www.meandmonomy.com uh, bung up. Um, it's, it's partly the fact the roof that lets in the heat is also very thin, so it, it means it gets cold in winter. Um, and it is it also to do with the fact that quite often particularly if it's wet and the temperature outside is, is awkward, you're having to open these side windows because, and this is another big, big issue, and I can't stress this enough, is the fogging. You know, Citroen produced these, um, and we, we've pre had to print ours, um, uh, these uh, redirectors for the heater, but in the end, the blower at the front does not clear this front windscreen adequately enough. Uh, other people have tried all kinds of other things. We've, we've even tried little hot air eaters in the winter at the front, they help. Um, but it is not, for my money, it is not pleasurable to drive it in the rain with the fogging. It's seriously stressy. 
uh, and uh, it just takes away the fun. So bear in mind that if you're going to be out there in lots of rain and lots of cold weather, you're going to have issues in this department. I'm not saying don't buy it, but I am saying think about it because it's something when you go out on a test drive you might not think of try and do a test drive in the rain see what they say and and see how you feel about it then and the final thing to say about the effect of temperature is of course the effect on batteries all electric vehicles are affected by cold weather the range will drop the ME is no different it has a battery management system which kicks in to protect the battery when things are too cold there are ways of trying to get round this uh, uh, well you can't really get round the reduction in range once you get to a really cold uh, scenario you are going to get a shorter range in some cases I think you're going to get quite a bit shorter range um, there are ways of getting round a little bit uh, the fact that the top speed may be curtailed because of the temperature uh, one way you can do that is, is simply to put the, the vehicle let's say the last 30 minutes of its charge before you leave home put it on before you leave home so that you warm the battery up so you're not starting from cold but if you are starting from cold or if you then go and park it at work or at school or whatever and you get back in and it's two degrees out there or less uh, you will find that the top speed will be reduced so again it's a it's a winter issue uh, and it's not something we've suffered from very much at all in fact I think I think I'm right in saying it's happened to us twice uh, and it once was after a terrific rainstorm we drove all the way back from Cannes and we were going up a hill that we usually do 45 up not a very steep hill we usually top speed up there and suddenly I was going oh my god we're doing 28 uh, kilometers uh, and uh, I went wow this is the battery management system protecting itself so bearing all that in mind would we could we do it all again well we've had terrific fun there's no question we adore this little thing uh, despite all its flaws there is something about it you forgive many of those flaws many of them I think would be easily solved you know if it had an air conditioning system my god would it be better uh, and, and it really is difficult to work out how you would fit one that would work you know so those things could be solved but somehow you do forgive it its flaws because because of the price because of the simplicity because of the concept and uh, because it makes people smile not laugh smile um, but we live in a particular part of the world which is not super cold and it'll be interesting over the next few weeks because we're going to try and go to some of the snowier bits of the, the the alps around here to see what happens to our performance so you you will get an idea about that so subscribe if you want to uh, find out more so yes whilst we might love this thing and we do um, it remains to be seen what the Citroen main dealership in Nice make of it because in a couple of days it is due to go in for its two year 10,000 kilometer service. So we're going to take it in and find out what the experts at Citroen think. Hope you've enjoyed this video. We've enjoyed the last two years tremendously. Here's to the next two. Uh, please give us a like, please give us a comment. Think about buying us a coffee, but remember folks, most of all, Stay charged.